Hi, this is Pastor Chris from River Rock Church, and it's the weekend before Thanksgiving, and I think it's going to be one of the most unusual Thanksgivings ever, as the governor, the Centers for Disease Control are saying, don't have outside guests come to your Thanksgiving gathering. Just keep it close, just in your family, so that you don't catch the COVID virus, so you don't get sick, so you don't spread the, the illness around. And so many people won't be traveling. Many people will be alone on Thanksgiving. So uh, maybe pick up the phone, give a call, do some video chatting, some text messaging, connect with people so that people don't feel so alone. But uh, in the short time that I have, I want to share with you six ways to give thanks and celebrate God's faithfulness as we come up to Thanksgiving time. So I'm going to read Psalm 116, which is a psalm about death and sickness and how God can help. And we're thinking a lot about death and sickness now because every day on the news they tell us how many people have been diagnosed had tested positive with the COVID virus. And they're telling us how many people died, how many people died in the state. You can look at how many people died in the county, died uh, in the country, died across the world, and then their projections and how many more people are going to die. And uh, nobody wants to die. So Hezekiah, uh, in Isaiah chapter 38, it says, About that time, Hezekiah came deathly, became deathly ill, and the prophet Isaiah went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you're going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. And he broke down and wept. Then Isaiah comes back with a new message from the Lord. Uh, it says, This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, says. I've heard your prayer and seen your tears, and I will add 15 years to your life, and I will rescue you in this city from the king of Assyria. So Hezekiah is going to be rescued. And Isaiah told him that the king would also get another 15 years to live. So what would you do if you knew that you were about to die, but God, you cried out to the Lord, and he said, you know what? I'm going to put you in extended play mode. I'm going to give you another 15 months, or I'm going to give you another 15 years. Uh, what would change about your life? Sometimes God can use sickness and fear and difficulty and all of the things that we go through to help us to grow closer to Him, to help us to grow deeper spiritually, to help us to learn to trust Him more. So let me share with you six ways to give thanks and celebrate God's faithfulness. Number one, I uh, love the Lord. I love the Lord. Psalm 116, verse 1. Uh, the reason I read about Hezekiah is because while nobody knows who wrote Psalm 116, uh, some have attributed it to Hezekiah because the uh, storyline fits pretty well. But anyway, uh, verse 1 from the New Living Translation. I love the Lord because He hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Because He bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. And then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. Doesn't that feel or doesn't that sound like the, the COVID uh, things that we're hearing about people that can't breathe and uh, how people, uh, some of them are, are dying and the things they're going through? I hope that uh, if they have breath or even not, that they call out on the Lord in their time of need, in their time of sickness, and ask God to save them, ask God to heal them. And let's pray for them right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to proclaim a message, even though it's on video. I pray that it would carry uh, across, the, across the town, across the world. Jesus, I pray that you would heal those who are sick, those who have been diagnosed with COVID, those who may have ended up in the hospital. Lord, we pray that you would heal them and restore their health. Lord, we pray that you would keep us from getting it. We pray that you would help us to be encouraging to those who do get it. Lord, we pray that you would help us to learn how to take care of ourselves so we can avoid things like this. Lord, we pray for the doctors and all the medical people and emergency responders and everybody that's uh, involved in trying to uh, help people and during these difficult times. Uh, what a mess. But Lord, I pray that you would bring healing. I pray that you would... Uh, when you're done using this virus situation for your glory and your purposes, that you would bring a cure and that we wouldn't have to worry about this anymore. And that 
when we are able to come out of this, when we're able to gather again, when we're able to be in large crowds, that we would be even more bold about living our faith and living for you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would rescue those and help us. In Jesus' name, amen. So number one, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. That relationship that we can have uh, with the Lord, uh, we love him because he first loved us. Number two, I am thankful for all he does for me. Thankful for all he does for me. Psalm 116, verse 5. How kind the Lord is. How good he is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I was facing death and he saved me. Let my soul be at rest again. For the Lord has been good to me. He has saved me from death. My eyes from tears. My feet from stumbling. I bet if we were to sit down and talk face to face, better even uh, when we don't have to wear a mask, because it's hard to understand people sometimes when they're wearing a mask, or if we were to video chat or talk on the phone or whatever, I bet you would share an experience that you had with me about uh, your near-death experiences or how you were sick and thought you were going to die or how you thought you were going to lose your job and go bankrupt and um, all the difficult things that we could go through and how you cried out to God and how he did something miraculous to save you and to help you and provide for you and to preserve your life. I bet a lot of you have stories like that. I'm not going to share mine for the sake of time, but the Lord is kind. He is good and merciful, and I'm thankful for all he does for me. Matter of fact, I probably don't even realize how much he does for me, how much he does to um, put me in the right place at the right time or protect me from harm or... uh, The Lord is merciful. The Lord is good. And I am thankful. And hopefully you are too. Let's be thankful for all the Lord does for us. You know, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 4 says, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So as you think about that, I mean, when the Lord helps you through, then uh, you have a faith experience. You have a God sighting. You know that the God of the universe reached into your life and comforted you and helped you in your trouble. And now you can take that same story to others that are going through the same thing and say, hey, you know, I probably haven't been going through exactly what you're going through, but I had a similar experience and this is what God did for me. This is how God helped me. This is how God preserved me. This is how God got me through it. And he's so faithful. Let's pray together for that. He comforts us in all of our troubles. Second Corinthians 12:10. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So when we are going through life and uh, we realize that we can't do it on our own, when we realize that we don't have the strength or the resources or the opportunity that we need help, when we cry out to God and He helps us, that's when we're truly strong. We are strong in the Lord. We are strong with His strength. So... uh, He gives us strength to accomplish his purposes and to to live the life that he intended for us to live. Number three, I walk with the Lord. I walk with the Lord. Uh, Verse nine, so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. I believed in you. So I said, I am deeply troubled, Lord. In my anxiety, I cried out to you. These people are all liars. So walking with the Lord. You know, um, currently... A lot of my friends are talking about not being able to trust the media, uh, not being able to trust politicians, wondering if uh, people in the medical community are telling the truth about the virus, wondering who's liars. Uh, Sometimes it seems like everybody's spinning a tale and everybody's a liar and only God knows who's telling the truth and what exactly is going on. But God is also in control. So we might be able to use this mess to accomplish his purposes, to bring something better and greater in our lives. But we need to just walk hand in hand with the Lord through this difficulty, through these hard times and to do our part to be helpful and encouraging and godly and to point people to Jesus. But we walk with the Lord every day and that would be a great way to to, uh, live in thanksgiving, to praise the Lord, to show your faith, and to have a successful and blessed life to walk with the Lord each day. You know, when it comes to uh, these people are all liars. 
I'm glad I have Christian friends. I'm glad that I have people to share life with. 1 Corinthians 1, 4. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. And I thank God for all of you that I know that are Christ followers, that we share this faith in Christ together, that we share this common bond, that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. This is so awesome. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for you. Philippians 1.3 says, I thank my God every time I remember you because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I just think it's so great that we can serve with others uh, here and even around the world and have that common bond, uh, that common mission of uh, leading lost people to Christ and helping them become disciples and um, just furthering God's kingdom, uh, to be able to do that uh, with people around the world. I'm so thankful for the people that we're able to do that with around the world. So, and in our own neighborhoods, obviously, in our own church. Uh, Romans 1, 8, 1, 8, Romans 1, 8, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because of your faith. It's being reported all over the world. You know, our faith, our faith message, uh, these videos are actually, and the audios are actually being played around the world. So uh, people listen in Asia, and people sometimes listen in Canada, eh? Uh, people listen around the world. And so when we share our faith in Christ nowadays, uh, we can share that around the world. In Romans 1 8, when that was first written, that people were spreading it by word of mouth as they were traveling. But now we can take our video recording devices, our phones, and we can send our messages around the world to people all around the world. So, and I'm thankful for that. Number four, number four, I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. Psalm 116 verse 12. What can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. So the package deal of salvation. Uh, we're saved when we place our faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, for our salvation. So Jesus Christ, he came to earth. He lived among us. He died on the cross for our sins. He rose again. He ascended into heaven and he'll be back. But by believing upon Jesus, by placing our faith in Jesus, we can be saved from the penalty of our sins. We're all sinners. Every one of us sin. And sin is doing anything that's outside of God's will. Sin is doing anything that disobeys God's plan for our life. So uh, living in rebellion is uh, obviously sinful. But uh, by uh, bowing the knee, by... Uh, uh, humbling ourselves before the Lord, realizing that we're sinners and asking Jesus to come into our lives and save us. We can be saved and uh, get that package deal of salvation. So uh, and praise the Lord for saving us. And um, a great way to do that is by telling Jesus that you want to be saved. And a great way to talk to Jesus is through prayer because prayer is talking to God. You can pray something like this, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and that you died on the cross for my sin and you rose again, and you hear my prayer. Please forgive me of my sin and come into my life and save me. Make me the person you created me to be. I want to follow after you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you did that, let us know. We can get you some resources to help you grow in the Christian life, and then you can praise the Lord with us. Uh, if you've been a Christian for a while, uh, why don't you think about what your life would be like if you had to come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you weren't a Christ follower, where would you be right now? If you weren't a Christ follower and you were in a difficult situation, a near-death experience, what would you do? Who would you cry out to? If you are a Christ follower and your neighbors don't know about Christ, maybe you should pray for and seek opportunities to tell them so that they can call upon the name of the Lord in their time of need uh, or even in their boredom, and be saved, and praise the Lord for saving them. Number five, I will keep my promises to the Lord. I will keep my vows. I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. So when we go through this life, many times we make promises to the Lord. Uh, sometimes when people are about to die, they make promises and they're like, Lord, if you get me out of this and preserve my life, I promise to serve you. I promise to uh, worship you. I promise to get to church. I promise to do all these things. 
Um, I remember there was a time in my life where I told the Lord, Lord, if you give me this opportunity, I promise to tithe to you. I promise to give back at least a tenth of what you bless me with as an act of worship because I trust you. And then God answered my prayer. So that is a promise. That is a vow. I need to keep that. So giving back to God is not foolish at all. You always come out ahead when you put God first. And when you put God first with your finances and give back to him as an act of worship, give to the church, uh, that is an awesome way to uh, live a life that's blessed, to live a life that honors the Lord, to, um, if you've made promises, to keep your promises. And then it says, the Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. Again, everybody's going to die sometime. And the Lord doesn't laugh when we die. He doesn't, he's not, ex well, when we die, actually, it is kind of an exciting time because we've gone from the difficulty of this life to all the glories of uh, being in the Lord's presence. So it is a time of celebration. Uh, but he knows that it's hard for us who are here, uh, left on earth, those who grieve, who um, go through difficult times. So the Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. Number six, I will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Whoever this psalmist is, maybe he's like, Lord, if you get me out of this, I promise to serve you. Uh, Psalm 116, verse 16. Oh, Lord, I'm your servant. Yes, I'm your servant, born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call in the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the house of the Lord, in the heart of Jerusalem, praise the Lord. I am your servant. You know, when Jesus Christ uh, purchased us, our salvation, when we became children of God, uh, we are His, and we are His servants. So, um, Bob Dylan from Hibbing, Minnesota, uh, made a popular uh, a song lyric that says, uh, you're going to serve somebody, it may be the devil, it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. I choose to serve the Lord. Number six, I will serve the Lord. All right, so what are you thankful for? Uh, usually, we would have in our church service, if we were able to get together, um, and actually, legally, we are able to get together and fill our church facility at 50% capacity, not over 250 people. However, uh, since we are renting the school, and we don't currently have a church facility, though we're trying to purchase one right now, so you can pray about that and maybe give towards that, that would be awesome. But uh, uh, since we don't have a facility that's large enough to protect our church people, uh, since other churches don't want to share their space with us because they're afraid they're going to give us or we're going to give them COVID, um, we are video only right now. But so are other churches. Uh, one of our sister churches, uh, even though they have lots of space, have chosen to uh, take some weeks off and be video only until this COVID storm blows over. But anyway, this would be a time in our service where we'd pass the microphone around and people would say what they're thankful for. They would um, share all the different things they're thankful for. And it was really one of my favorite times of the year. I miss it. So send me a message. Let me know what you're thankful for. That'd be awesome. Psalm 116, verse 17 again. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Um, this Thanksgiving week, maybe take some time. Maybe take some time to tell the Lord how thankful you are and count your blessings Name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So anyway, uh, thankful. We need to be thankful. So uh, here's a video that talks uh, about uh, unprecedented thanks, and it's very timely. Uh, maybe they'll even mention some of the experiences that you've been going through as you've gone through uh, this COVID uh, season, COVID nightmare, <laughs> COVID difficulty. COVID life pause, uh, the year of 2020, boy. Anyway, watch the video. Well, um, it has been an unprecedented year. Crazy. With all the, the... This stuff? Yeah. It's unprecedented how many times we've actually heard the word unprecedented. <laughs> Our dream vacation was canceled. You got to keep the job you don't like. Uh -huh. You know they can see you? But well, let me tell you all the no's, friends. Um, no going to restaurants, no movie theaters, no movie theater popcorn, no state parks, no going to athletic events, no church services, and no... Don't say it. 
don't. Hey kids, you've got to be more careful with the toilet paper. This is all we have. All the drive-by birthday parties, graduations, <laughs> baby showers. I will say this, I felt a little awkward throwing out that baby shower gift into the front yard. You weren't supposed to do that. It just feels like a wasted year. I said it, I said it. Yeah, there's just all the time at home. Boom! And all the time that we were made to spend together. Hey, honey. Honey. Leave me alone! All the heart to hearts. Mm. Goodness. Speaking of hearts, our son, Jason, right over there said yes to Jesus. Right at that kitchen table. July 17th, 2020. You know, I guess it's not really wasted time because God didn't waste a moment of it. <laughs> I think I have the answer to what I'm thankful for. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? Everything. All right, well, I think the video is very fitting, and you and I need to be thankful. So we want to be thankful and grateful, and then we can be blessed. And we are blessed, and we should be grateful and thankful. So anyway, God is faithful. Uh, years ago, uh, I think it was 2011, uh, one of my friends uh, wrote a book called Secrets to a Happy Life. And he actually sent me the manuscript before it was published and uh, did a sermon series with it back then, right when the book came out. It was a great series, great book. You can still buy this book on Amazon or Google Play Books, or uh, you can get it uh, digitally, digitally that way. Or you could buy a used copy, but it's a really good book. And I think it's really fitting for right now. Uh, so many people aren't finding life to be so happy. But he had 11 points or 11 chapters in his book. 11 Secrets to a Happy Life. And uh, before I let you go, I just wanted uh, to share just, the, just the see what the secret was. Uh, maybe uh, whet your appetite, uh, read the book, or read the book again. And uh, think about that as you go through the difficulties in life that you're going through right now, because life is difficult. So let me share with you the 11 Secrets of a Happy and Highly Contented Life by my friend, Christian and Missionary Alliance Pastor, Bill Giovanetti from Redding, California. Number one, letting go, having a pilgrim's heart. Think like a pilgrim, holding all things lightly because earth's deepest joys are rooted in heaven's highest blessing. Number two, destiny, a sense of destiny. Nurture your personal sense of destiny because it toughens you against the storms of life. Number three, consistency. Consistency, spiritual consistency. Be consistent with God over time in all the areas of life because your internal contradictions make you nuts. Number four, loyalty. Unwavering loyalty. Reciprocate the immeasurable loyalty of God to you by your own loyalty back to Him because moral shortcuts make happiness fizzle. Number five, endurance. Complaint-free waiting. Keep faith with God in the in-between times because for God, time is not a complication in the achievement of your dreams. I don't, want to I don't want to comment on every one of these for the sake of time, but I would like to say that if you find yourself with nothing to do, if you are COVID quarantined, if you are unable to go to work or you're working from home and your work's pretty much done and there's nowhere to go and nothing to do, maybe this would be a great time for you to grow in your faith, to watch some of those right now media videos, to get equipped and prepared to serve God more fully, to lead a small group, to teach a teach a class, to help with the youth group, um, to share your faith, uh, so many different things, uh, to maybe uh, commit your life to a full-time Christian ministry as a missionary or a pastor or something uh, in those lines. Uh, 
use this downtime as a time to sharpen your saw, as a time to retool, as a time to equip, as a time to prepare for the future. Because I'm pretty confident that this COVID thing isn't going to last forever. And I have a feeling that as soon as it's over, that uh, people are going to come out of their houses and they're just going to go crazy when it comes to partying, socializing, doing all sorts of stuff that they missed out on. And uh, they're really going to need Jesus. And they're probably going to be open to coming to uh, bigger gatherings things and things like that. So uh, prepare for that. Get ready for that because I think the roaring 20s are about to take place again just like 100 years ago. Number six, trust. Faith in a successful God. Rest in the providence of God because your happiness depends on trusting a God who simply cannot fail. You know, God provides in so many ways. When we ask for provision, when we ask for help, when we pray for things that we need, uh, the Lord says, Jesus says, we often have not because we ask not. Sometimes we ask with wrong motives, but seek him first, his kingdom and his righteousness, and he'll provide everything that we need. So whatever you need, pray about it. Whatever you need, ask God for help. And if you're short um, and God doesn't seem to you know, provide that need for you right away, uh, at least let uh, your landlord, your creditor, people know that because of COVID or, or whatever, that uh, you're short. And sometimes God uses that to help. Matter of fact, the city of Belle Plaine, where we live, has a fund right now that I think has funds in it still, that if you are unable to pay your mortgage payment or your rent, they might be able to assist you. So if you live in our town, contact the city of Belle Plaine and see if they can help you. But God uses many different ways to provide. God uses um, so many different ways. We need to learn to trust in God's faithfulness and provision. Number seven, there's only 11. Number seven, closure. Closure for the sins of your past. Close the books on unresolved guilt and shame because those loose ends only guarantee misery. You know, Jesus can forgive us from the past and for the sins of today and the stuff we do even tomorrow. Uh, it's not a license to sin, but uh, don't get hung up in the past. So don't glorify the past. Don't uh, uh, remember those glory days, those sinful glory days and brag about it, but get closure. So ask for forgiveness, be done with it, move on. Uh, acknowledge you're not that person anymore. And if they had an opportunity to do it again, you probably wouldn't make those bad choices. Number eight, identity. Know your riches. Know the riches of your new identity and grace because you are who God says you are no matter what anyone else says. It's so great to study the grace of God and how he relates to us and how he loves us and how he's not uh, like a legalistic cosmic cop ready to beat us down every time we make a little mistake. But then again, he's not a benevolent grandpa that just says, oh, do whatever you want, kids. Just I want you to have fun. So uh, know your true identity in Christ. Bill Giovanetti's books, his multiple books, are actually good for that. So I highly recommend them. He's also a professor at Tozer Seminary, which is a Christian and Missionary Alliance school. And he's also running his own kind of Bible training, like seminary classes, except you don't have to pay all the money. Maybe you want to check into that. Uh, send me uh, a request for information and I can forward you to his resources. Number nine, wisdom. Number nine, wisdom. Have a divine viewpoint. Do your life and world from heaven's perspective because your life's happiness is a subplot in God's cosmic plan to bless the world. What a fitting word right now. We look around and we're like, what in the world is going on? I don't get it. Well, God does. So he must be uh, working out. Maybe he's setting the stage for uh, the next big thing to happen in the kingdom of God. So uh, trust in the Lord's wisdom, have wisdom. Number 10, surrender. There's only 11. Number 10, surrender. Respect for the godness of God. Quit pushing back against God's ways because he is working for your joy even when you don't see it. Surrender your will and your life to Jesus. And number 11, number 11, love. Love, a transcendent cause. Donate your life to loving purposes because anyone who wants to finish a happy life must lose it first. You gotta put others first. You gotta love others. Loving God, loving others. The two greatest commandments. That's from The Secrets to a Happy Life by Bill Giovanetti, finding satisfaction in any situation. I am not a paid representative. So I just thought it was fitting for what we're going through in life right now. And all things give thanks. So after Thanksgiving comes Christmas season. I don't know what Christmas season looks like, 
but uh, I know what my Christmas messages are going to be coming up. So uh, on the 29th, uh, when God's plans leave you speechless. On the 6th, what are we expecting for Christmas? On the 13th of December, take time to be holy. On the 20th, a week before Christmas, a weekend before Christmas, focus on the true meaning of Christmas. Oh, if we don't have a building yet, I could do a Christmas Eve service by video. Huh, could add something in there. And then right before New Year's, finding hope for the new year. Hopefully this COVID stuff will be all done and we can get back to, to meeting and gathering, but who knows? If you want us to pray for you, let us know at riverrockchurch.com slash pray. Uh, you can hear or watch uh, past messages at riverrockchurch.com, listen, or riverrockchurch.com slash watch. And what you'll find there are links. So there's all sorts of different uh, outlets that have our audio. Um, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Tuned In Radio, iHeart, iTunes, all those. And then we're on uh, putting videos on YouTube and Facebook video. So you can find links for that under the watch. We also put some, each Sunday, we put some links to uh, Children's Bulletin and some kids' resources out there. You'll find the links for that at riverrockchurch.com slash watch. So uh, our life groups were meeting, but now they've basically uh, re, uh, retreated to Zoom meetings. So uh, unless it's a really, really small group in a large room, uh, most of the groups have retreated and are just meeting online temporarily. I don't expect that to last very long. We surely don't want to spread a virus or have anybody get sick or uh, put anybody at risk. Uh, still, uh, the only way that River Rock Church is supported is through your generous giving. So uh, you can give online, you can give by mail at P.O. Box 184, Belle Plaine, Minnesota 56011. You can give by text. Uh, you can give by you can give in person if you, if you see me. So give me a COVID free envelope. Uh, anyway, and then there's that one more way that you can support River Rock Church through Amazon Smile. So uh, shop at Amazon at Smile. The address is smile.amazon.com forward slash ch forward slash zero three dash zero three eight three nine six nine. So, or you can go to our website and just search on the word Amazon smile. Is that one word or two words? Anyway, um, you can, with your Amazon purchases and they give like a percentage uh, back to River Rock Church. So you can also do that with your Coburn's Rewards points. You can uh, select River Rock Church uh, with your Coburn's Rewards and we use that money for children's ministry. So anyway, uh, my time is done, but happy Thanksgiving. God is faithful. So I hope that you have a great Thanksgiving week and find ways to be thankful even when you're not getting what you want, even when things aren't turning out as you hope, even if you are feeling a little lonely because your whole family didn't get together like they usually do. Again, what a weird year. But uh, anyway, we'll see you next week. God bless you.